Okay, welcome back, everybody. This is episode 343 of the John 1911 podcast. Today is July 13th. It is 1144 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. This is the day that someone took a shot and hit Trump in the side of the head. Um, been sitting on this for a few hours, like many of you, waiting for first reports to come in and to kind of separate the wheat from the chaff as to where things actually are, what actually is happening versus, you know, rumor and conspiracy and I'm convinced some of the stuff on the internet is deliberate disinformation. Um, I guess the first thing I, I guess we can say, and I was kind of holding my breath on this, is I was pretty worried about Trump. I mean, obviously, you know, that should go without saying. But what I mean by that is when I initially was receiving reports that Trump was shot and I saw the video... I thought it was a small caliber weapon with a suppressor up close. And my fear was it was somebody below the president within probably 30, within within 75 feet of him taking shots. And while he may not be instantly incapacitated, my fear was much like how Ronald Reagan walked into the hospital when he was injured by... um, you know, whatever that douchebag's name was, I don't even care to remember his name, you know, it, later on, he developed a lot of problems. And my fear was, even though Trump was defiant and everything, that he may be hurt worse than what we're thinking, especially if something went into his skull. And so, um, oddly enough, when they were, news was coming out, talking about there being a, a rifle shooter, um, it's still, I still think maybe it could be a suppressor might have been involved. Again, we're a, we're gun people, we're a gun channel, um, gun content. So, but it's hard to tell with the internet, with microphones. You know, you guys watch videos on the internet. We make videos on the internet. And one thing that microphones do is they tend to level out, they tend to level out highs and lows. So anything that's really loud, they'll pull it down. Anything that's really low, they'll pull it up to try to even things out. So it's very difficult to, to really capture sound on a generic, you know, broadcast type microphone because it's really trying to just capture the human voice. It's not trying to, you know, discern information or data excuse me, for, you know, for like forensic analysis or for for crime and whatever. So oddly enough, when I heard it was a rifle that was used later on, I started to feel a lot better about Trump because obviously if he was, the way he was nicked, if he had been hit by a rifle and it was serious, it would have been instantaneously noticeable. So um, even though I had, we hadn't heard from Trump in a little bit, you know, he still had to go to the hospital and had to be cleared by medical. I started to feel a little bit better than that. Um, also let us not forget, I don't, we don't have all the facts, but we, right now, I believe again, as of 1147 PM Eastern standard time, that at least one person in the crowd was fatally injured. I've actually seen a video that the media has been running of a different angle of the shoot of the of of the uh, shooting, and a more of a wider angle. And I don't think the media has caught it, but if you look at the crowd, and then a particular person in the crowd, he's at the he's at this particular video. He, it's on he's on the right side of your screen. I think he's wearing white and a white hat, but he is, and I could be mistaken on that because I saw it a few hours ago. He is near the top of the bleachers and he he falls like he's been shot. And I think the media is not quite realizing because they're looking at Trump that they're actually showing this, you know, Trump supporter getting shot on, on video. And I think that was the, as that gets picked up, that'll get cleaned up on the internet. So prayers for him. There might be another person. Obviously, you put a, a rifle round into you know, into a human with, you know, with humans as a backstop, you're at least going to have two injuries, possibly three. I've heard rumors that there's a third civilian that's been injured, um, possibly not that significantly, but, you know, am I in a position to even really say that? So I don't know. I mean, I pray for the family of the person who was killed. I pray for anyone that was injured. I pray for Donald Trump and his family. 
And I pray for the Secret Service and the law enforcement officers that are out there protecting Donald Trump and ultimately democracy in this country. Now, with that being said, I need to say this, and I've said this before on this podcast, and I think it needs to be said again. It is becoming increasingly clear to me, I can't say for you, that the media no longer works in this country. And I don't mean that necessarily, you know, obviously I'm a conservative, I'm a Trump supporter, you know, we're, we're, we're Republican, you know, whatever you wanted to find a Republican ass. And so if I start criticizing the media, people want to talk about, just assume that I'm attacking CNN or MSNBC or, or, or whatever, it doesn't matter. I'm talking about the right as well. The media has become so hyperbolic. And we see this every, we see this every four years. And I'm going to remind everybody because it's easy to forget. You know, in 2008, this was the most important election ever. In 2012, this is the most important election ever. You know, in 2000 with Bush v. Gore, it was the most important election ever. You know, the fate of the country to, you know, 2004 with Kerry and Bush. This is the most important election ever. And, you know, they're, you know, what? I mean, it was the media was making up stuff about George Bush. You know, the media makes up stuff about, you know, candidates all the time. And it's the media no longer it, okay it used to be that when you watch the news to be fair when you watch the news you know you would see it for an hour a day and you know with commercials maybe it's 40 minutes or really if, it's, if you're watching you know 5 30 to 6 or 6 to 6 30 news it'd be what 22 minutes of news you know maybe 25 minutes of news maybe 18 minutes of news you know, then you were maybe good to 11. Well, now we have 24-hour news coverage. And what's become clear to me is they're, they're so desperate to try to get eyeballs that everything is a crisis. They, they catastrophize everything. And obviously, Donald Trump getting shot is a catastrophe. But in, you know, any presidential candidate getting shot is a catastrophe. Any former president getting shot is a catastrophe. That's not the point. The point is we are at a catastrophe. But how we get here is the media just can't say Donald Trump sucks because they they would show their hand too much. They're like, he sucks. I don't think he sucks. I don't think he's perfect, but I don't think he sucks. But you know, this idea that um, democracy is going to die, democracy, the fate of democracy is going to be decided if Donald Trump gets elected or doesn't get elected is bonkers batshit talk. And what happens is when you tell dumbass people or, you know, as the media likes to call them, low information Antifa voters, that Donald Trump is Satan, Donald Trump is the devil and, you know, you're going to put gay people in camps and he's going to be a dictator and he's going to, you know, all this nonsense. Some low information Antifa voter is very easily going to be motivated or activated to start shooting people because in his little pea-brained two-cell amoeba mind, you know, he's, he's stopping Hitler. Well, not everything is Hitler. Hitler was Hitler. Trump isn't Hitler. Obama isn't Hitler. You know, um, you know. I mean, I could say Bill Crystal isn't Hitler. I, I don't like Bill Crystal anymore. But everyone needs to kind of chill out a little bit. Let people vote for who they want to vote for. And the more you try to stop people from voting for who they want to vote for, or you disenfranchise people, or you take the choices away from them, the more out of control this shit gets, okay? If people want to vote for Hillary Clinton, let them vote for Hillary Clinton. If 
people want to vote for Donald Trump, let them vote for Donald Trump. If people want to vote for Bernie Sanders, let them vote for Bernie Sanders. If people want to vote for Barack Obama, let them vote for Barack Obama. If people want to vote for uh, RFK Jr., let them vote for RFK Jr., okay? That kind of cycle is what relieves the political pressure in this country so things can reset every four or 12 years or four or eight years. It, it's late. Um, and the media, I'm going somewhere with this. The media's been pretty quiet today. I mean, just even the, even the lefty media, when you watch them, like CNN today, their chirons and their stories, it says Secret Service evacuates Donald Trump because he tripped. Or there's a secure there was a security event at a Trump rally. And it was and this was and two hours later, it's obvious somebody took a shot at Trump. It's obvious Trump got shot. But they can't say that because they're so biased and they're so up with their heads up their own asses that they just, they're so non-functional that you can't trust them anymore. You can't even trust them to say the most basic of things where all you have to do is apply the other side of the argument. Can you imagine in this country if somebody had ever taken a shot at Barack Obama? much less wounded him, what the media would do instantaneously. I mean, I'm not even certain right now that any of the mainstream news that people keep sending me, because I won't won't watch it, have even used the word assassination or attempted assassination in regards to Donald Trump. It's gunfire, security event, security issue. Someone shot Donald Trump. You can make an argument that he wasn't shot. And if you're the kind of person that would make that argument, you go on national TV and do that and see what happens to you. Try to make that argument if it was Barack Obama. And while I'm on the subject, I said this 12 years ago, and I said it eight years ago. I would take a bullet for Barack Obama. As much as I disagree with him politically, and as much as even even as a former president, I would still take a bullet for Barack Obama, because nobody touches a president. Even though we don't agree politically, and I think he's a low-key socialist, you know, letting the other side vote for him and get him elected so they can see that all the promises he supposedly could deliver on, well, it doesn't really quite work like that, does it? There's an upside to it, just like there's an upside to letting Donald Trump win if he deserves to win. Now let's just talk about this for a minute. If I'm thinking about what would happen to Donald, thinking to Barack Obama, is horrendous, as, I mean, that, would be a, that would be a nightmare for this country. I, as a Republican or conservative, if something like that, it would be a nightmare. It'd be a nightmare politically. It'd be a nightmare culturally for this country. Just like, as honestly, right now, the fact that Donald Trump was shot by probably some commie wacko, got literally shot in the head, got winged in the ear, and now there's this defiant photograph of Donald Trump with blood streaming down his face, pumping his fist, telling the Secret Service what to do. It's going to go down in history. That photograph is going to go down in the history books a thousand years from now. Politically, that is a disaster for the Democrats. Just like if somebody even even spit on Barack Obama, which is why I would not allow it to happen if I had the ability to stop it. Even today, Markey from John 1911 takes a bullet for Barack Obama. I mean, talk about like ironic or I don't know what, but I would. I'd take one for Trump. But I would like to think I wouldn't have to. But let's let's think of this a little bit. What happens 
if Donald Trump had been killed tonight? What happens in America? What happens tomorrow? Does the right riot? Do they burn down cities? Or is it is that a is if that's a, and is it a if Donald Trump is if Donald Trump were to have been killed is that a loss for the Republicans or is it a victory for the Republicans and I'm not saying that in terms of you know like David French and Bill Crystal and Jonah Goldberg who never Trumpers like it's a victory for them I mean in sense it could be is it a victory for Republicans like Obi-Wan Kenobi you strike me down I'll be more powerful than you could ever possibly imagine or is it a victory for the left if Donald Trump had been killed tonight and it's a victory for the left do they get in the streets and they celebrate and then the media pretends that they don't celebrate like they did certain groups that celebrated in the streets after 9-11? Or, you know, is it like a basketball championship where their side wins, but they, they burn the city down anyway because it's a victory? It's becoming more and more clear as I disconnect from mainstream media that you know, sides are going to have to be taken here. And, I, you know, I'm not taking a Republican side. I'm definitely not taking a Democratic side. I'm taking my side and I'm taking the American side. You know, I am not going to let the media drive the narrative. I'm also not going to let Twitter drive the narrative. I'm going to come back to that with some of the conspiracy theories I'm already hearing from people emailing me with. We have to try to be decent, but yet dangerous people. Let me say that again. You can be both. You can be a decent person and you can be a dangerous person. Being a decent person should be obvious when it's time to be decent. Being a dangerous person should be obvious when it's time to be dangerous. Don't let Twitter, don't let Fox News, don't let Marky at John 1911 tell you when that should be. You need to know that on your own. Don't look to the internet. Don't look to the outside sources for that internal compass on which way you need to go in life and what your priorities need to be. I support Donald Trump, but he's not Jesus. I pray for him every day, but he's not Jesus. And if he were to have died, he's not Jesus. He probably would be Obi-Wan Kenobi. And with that said, here's a rhetorical question for the world. I don't think we get too many liberals that listen to this podcast anymore. Um, Assuming that the person who shot Donald Trump is a liberal, is a communist, is a Democrat, is an Antifa member, is whatever. And right now, I don't know. For all I know, Bill Kristol was up on that roof. Probably not, but, you know, we don't know. I have to go with facts. If the liberals, are you so sure that this is what you want to do. You want to start getting into real fights with real Americans who have the Constitution, the flag, American culture, American history, and the Second Amendment on their side. Is that the fight you really want to have? I would hope If the person that did something crazy, whatever it is, I'm not even saying this, but let's say the person, for whatever event, let's pretend we're not talking about Trump getting shot, but there's some crisis and something crazy happened and some crazy person does something. I would hope just like a crazy person shows up and shoots a bunch of black people in a mall or at a grocery store doesn't reflect me 
I would hope in your heart of hearts that a person who shows up and shoots Donald Trump doesn't reflect you. Because I can promise you that when I hear a story about some racist, bigot piece of shit showing up someplace, claim to be a conservative, and hurting a bunch of people who are not white, I, in my deepest, darkest recesses of my mind, am not even remotely fucking happy about it. It doesn't reflect me. It doesn't make me happy. It doesn't help my position. It doesn't even the score. It doesn't, it's nothing. I hate it. I hate that guy and I want to kill him. But when you heard about Donald Trump, if in part of your, even the deepest recesses of your mind, you were like, tee hee, serves him right, whatever, you're fucked up. Okay, let's run through some of the bullet points here, some of the things that I, I guess we need to cover real quick. Um, it's going to be curious to find out what kind of rifle was used. It'd be curious to find out if there's more than one shooter, um, if there was a suppressor used. Again, you know, I made reference to the microphone and camera issue. Uh, the, the person being far away is, you know, not... That would explain some of the issues with the sound I initially heard. So, you know, again, as a gun person, I'm like, oh, no, you know, oh, not a suppressor. Um, there's already been some, I'm hearing two different stories. Some people are claiming this is some deep state conspiracy and some highly trained professional sniper that must somehow be involved with some kind of super secret government, you know, expert level something because the shot was taken at five or 600 yards. Joseph R., who's one of our regulars, he and then it's, he figured it out, and then it's come out later. Uh, we're here in between 125 and 150 yards. I could teach your mom to shoot a raccoon at 150 yards with a rifle. It's not that far. It really isn't. That's like point-blank range, really, for a rifle. So it's not a conspiracy. A person taking a shot at Trump, you know, it doesn't appear that it was like some thousand yard shot. It was relatively close. And on, while we're on that subject, I'm now getting videos of the counter snipers or the snipers who some of them are showing up on video. They would be above Trump in a two dimensional photograph above Trump to Trump's right. So depending on which angle you're looking at Trump, but it'd always be to Trump's right. And you'll see two snipers. One of them has a like a small tripod. And another one I think is is laying, you know, kind of roof line prone. And there's some video that people are saying this doesn't this looks like a conspiracy theory because something, something about what they think they're looking at with these snipers relative to the shots, you know, coming at Trump. And looking at the video that I saw, I think what people are fixating on is they see snipers looking through scopes. Well, as someone who works with snipers fairly regularly, like very regularly, that's what they do. They look through scopes. They look through spotting scopes. They look through binoc binoculars. Sometimes they do it through rifles. Sometimes they do it whatever. And what I saw is I saw a sniper suddenly start to move, and I couldn't quite tell if he, right at the last second, saw the rifleman, and then started, he adjusted his tripod, and then started engaging, or if the, he, he heard the first crack. Because, again, I'm having to listen to the audio based off a microphone that's 150 feet from Donald Trump and it the microphone's trying to even out all the noises so it isn't forensically accurate but what i can tell you is i didn't see a sniper that was engaged in some a police sniper that was engaged in some kind of conspiracy to let trump get shot that is not what i saw on video that is another one of these Twitter bullshit things. Some people like to put their tinfoil hats on. I understand. I just got done telling you about how all the lies the media tells you. The media has been lying about all kinds of stuff. It doesn't mean every fucking thing you hear on the internet is true. 
okay? When in doubt, come to John 19.11, we'll tell you. If we're wrong or we got to issue an update, we will do that. We're wrong all the time. The videos that I'm seeing with the snipers covering Donald Trump, it all seems to be quite appropriate. Also, with that being said, looking at those snipers, those do not look like Secret Service snipers to me. I could be wrong. I think they're local PD snipers. And that gets into the other thing. A lot of people don't understand or they refuse to accept that former President Donald Trump is not the president. He does not have anywhere near the level of Secret Service protection that a sitting president has. It doesn't matter whether it's Joe Biden or it ends up being President Kamala Harris. The level, the sophistication, just the footprint of the coverage that the current sitting president gets is no, and what Donald Trump has, they are nowhere near being comparable. I mean, I bet it's a tenth. I bet it, it could be a twentieth of the, of the, detail and the footprint that goes into protecting, you know, a president. So some of you guys, this is another one of these conspiracy theories. It's the deep state, the secret service is somehow letting Trump get killed or try to be killed or, you know, it's some other big thing. Now, with that being said, let me take off Marky, the John 1911 podcast host hat, and put on Marky, the congressman hat. Yes, Director So-and-So of the United States Secret Service, can we go over the, the policy of the Secret Service for uh, details, for, uh, protective details for former presidents? Can we go over the policies and coverage that we give uh, for candidates who are running for president and when do we start giving them detail? And then with that being said, does Donald Trump have extra detail or does he have the same detail that George W. Bush has? George W. Bush is the guy that, um, you know, took out Saddam Hussein. Barack Obama is the guy that took out Osama bin Laden. They're going to have to have details. Do they have bigger details as former presidents than Donald Trump does? Is that a yes? Is it a no? Was there a request by the current detail for former President Donald Trump for more assets and more security? What happened to those requests? Were they approved? Were they denied? Were they ignored? You can see where this goes. It's not just what you know, it's when did you know it. So that's where we're at right now. Um, I'm sure by the morning it'll all be different. It'll all be more updated. There'll be much more information. The full media, you know, every, tomorrow is Sunday, but I can guarantee you now every large news organization, well, maybe not because more than half of them don't like Donald Trump, but you would think that there's a lot of news organizations starting tomorrow that are not, their weekend is cut short. Fly back from Martha's Vineyard, fly back from, you know, the Appalachian Trail and, you know, get to work. But that's where we're at tonight. So let's just go. I'm going to end this on just a few simple things. I'm so grateful that Donald Trump wasn't killed tonight or incapacitated in some way. And not just for the normal reasons, but also because what does that mean as far as riots and everything I you know, postulated earlier? One of the things that's kind of nice is I'm sitting here recording this podcast, not a happy occasion, but I am recording it. I am way, way, way outside of the big cities, and it is quite the relief to be out here and not be in a city and have to worry about what happens. I've been through riots. I've been through civil unrest. I've been through... I mean, hell, I guess the pandemics, you could even say too, and all the nonsense. You know, there is a level of security out here that I think a lot of folks who probably listen to this podcast enjoy because I don't think a lot of you live in the big cities. I traditionally have, 
And it is quite a relief in some level to be like, well, Donald Trump is safe. He's not dead. I can turn off the news and check back in tomorrow to see what's going on. The final thing is, and I can say this with a bit of levity because, you know, Kraken and I have talked about this. I'm a big believer in being the happy warrior. And so I think that now that we know that Trump is not going to die, um, that we can all crack a, a few jokes. And I've been seeing some pretty funny memes, you know, with Donald Trump with his finger out, you know, missed me, bitch, or whatever, um, you know. And I can't help but my little meme, it's in my own head. It's because I'm kind of a political animal. Um you know, politically speaking, in some weird way, I feel like the biggest political loser tonight is probably Hillary Clinton. And you're probably thinking, what on earth does Hillary Clinton have to do with any of this? Well, all I can think of is all the things she said and she did and you know, and yet she persisted and all you know, all these just this contrived stuff that she did fighting Trump in her whole career, even before Trump, and just running her mouth, and it just really trading on fake narratives. And even now, poor Hillary, she used to go around and tell stories how she was dodging sniper fire in Croatia when she was the first lady. And now Donald Trump is on international television Bumping his fist. I don't know if he's saying fight or he's saying fuck. But Hillary can't catch a break. So God bless America. God bless Donald Trump. Everybody be safe. We'll catch up with you soon.